everybody. Oh my goodness. It is almost time to ring in a new year. Can you believe it? But before then, we've got one last episode of Mastering Social Media for Schools. And I have with me today, Heidi Vega. Heidi is the Director of Communications for the Arizona School Boards Association. Um, but you're going to want to listen, whether you're a school PR person or you serve an association or a ESC or a cooperative or a BOCES, you guys, Heidi's just got a lot of great practical advice um, of reaching her audience and unique ways of using social media for that. So um, Heidi is going to dive into kind of her experience and what they're doing for social media. They've got a whole program around Equity 365, which I think you'll find really intriguing. And then we really talk about what does educational equity look like? Um, and it's uh, it's really powerful, uh, her approach. So I, um, I love this conversation and I know you will as well. Um, you know, looking into 2023 and hopefully you're setting some goals up for yourself. Um, you guys, my big goal in 2023, I am publishing my first book on social media for schools. Yes, it is in the works. I don't have a release date yet, but uh, the month of December here, I have been working so hard. Um, and the big thing is it's got so much great advice from school communicators across the country. Um, so I am really, really excited. So thank you to each and every one of you who have agreed to be part of it. We're working on getting all the final approvals for how we wrote about your stories in there. Um, but this is going to be a true guide for social media for your school. It's going to be something that's going to be helpful to be on your desk uh, when you're in a pinch, uh, when you're wondering about something where you can refer back to it. It's not just a read and put down and never look at again. This is going to be a really good resource for you. You know, I've been doing social media for schools since 2014. Um, so I'm almost on my nine year anniversary. And when you've done it that long and you've written as many blogs and done as many podcasts, like you learn a lot this is culminating everything together. So once it's available, we will for sure let you know. Um, but I am really excited. And that is one of my big goals for 2023 is I want to get that, that uh, book on every school communicator's desk um, because it's going to be super helpful. So now let's get to this week's K-12 PR tip. All right, this week's K-12 PR tip. We love Instagram Reels and Facebook Reels, don't we? And if you're looking to reach more people with your Reels, trending audio can really help. This is audio that is popular on the platforms. Um, it's being played a lot, and Instagram is going to give preference to Reels that are made with that audio. Now, the way that you can tell if you are watching Reels just in the Reels um, section of either Facebook or Instagram, the little audio is uh, shown down in the lower left-hand corner. And if there is an arrow pointed up to the right-hand corner, that means it's trending. So it's like a arrow up. Uh, if it just has musical notes or nothing by it, um, then it's just a regular audio and it wouldn't necessarily be trending. Now you can save audio. If you see something trending, and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to use that. You can save that audio and use that when you create a new reel. And also if you are creating a reel and you want to search for a certain topic, let's say it's happy new year. Um, it's going to bring up some audio options those audio options right next to it actually will have that arrow again if it's trending. So look for that. That should help you. Um, it'll definitely help your post be seen by more people. Um, so I hope this little Instagram reel, Facebook reel uh, uh, tip helps you create awesome reels in the new year. All right, let's get to this great interview with Heidi Vega. Hello, Heidi Vega. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm doing great in the 80 degree weather here in Arizona in December. <laughs> yeah, well, it's uh we just got like seven inches of snow here in Wisconsin. So you can, <laughs> you can brag about that warm weather. Um, Heidi, I have known you for years. Um, you've had a lot of different roles and leadership level within the National uh, Association. Um, and so some of our 
listeners may not know who you are. So if you could just share your background and then kind of your current role, I know you're working now with the Arizona School Boards of Association. So um, just introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, so I, um, my name's Heidi Vega and um, I was a, you know, PR communication director um, in one of the largest uh, school districts here in Arizona, the Deer Valley Unified, and that's where I got my my start um, in the school PR industry um, and just worked my way up. I was a writer, media specialist, and then just worked my way up into becoming the director there. Um, and then I was there for about seven years, and then I got recruited to the Arizona School Boards Association. And so for some of you who may not know that, um, you all know that you have elected school board members. So every state um, has a uh, association that serves those school board members. So um, we're there, we are at, we're at, we're a a state level association where we provide um, everything from advocacy services, policy services, professional development, and so on. So I oversee all the communications there for Arizona. Okay. And you're the director of communications. Do you have a staff for your communications team or is it mainly just you? No, I ha- I'm lucky and blessed enough to have a staff. So I have a staff of two, um, a communications manager, um, and then she oversees two interns every semester. We have an awesome uh, journalism school here downtown, which is like literally like miles from a few miles from our office. So we um, we coordinate a really awesome internship. Um, and we do that every semester for them. And then I also have what's a little bit different, um, but amazing is I have a journalist on staff and we um, have our own news platform. It's called AZ News and we produce our own um, news for education, K-12 schools all across the state. Um, so our journalist um, uh, is under me. And then I have, and we have an intern that interns with her every semester as well. So it's pretty amazing. Okay. That is awesome. And is your audience for that specifically the school board members or is it all education educators in, in Arizona? AC Ed News is for any community member that just okay. wants to learn more about education. We'll cover, you know, policy news. We'll, we'll cover, um, you know, certain like house or Senate bills, you know, things they're making into law or just things that, you know, a general like parent wants to learn more about, you know, what's happening in their local school districts. So it's everybody. We provide teacher grants, $500 grants um, every semester. Um, and we just do a variety of things uh, really to engage our community as well, giving back. Okay. Awesome. So you had seven years of experience inside of a school district. And I know that's, we're going to talk about some of that work here. Um, Does social media fit into your role now um, that you're, that you're with uh, the school board association? Yeah, definitely. We have about 5,000 members. And so all those members are elected officials or superintendents, um, you know, administrative assistants or, or uh, secretaries to the, you know, to the board or the superintendent. So, you know, all those people, plus people, you know, that district leadership, even like our own school PR people, they all, you know, follow our social media uh, platforms just to see what's happening, what's going on um, and so on. So, yeah. So what channels do you guys run for the, for your association? So we run Facebook, obviously, because that is our target audience. Our members um, are generally that that fits the demographic. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we do Twitter, and we have Twitter for our own different you know reasons um, that we can get a little bit into. Um, but then what we did is we added um, we we had Instagram for we've had it for about two years, but we changed it up. Um, it used to only be for equity. We did a lot of educational equity initiative with our, our Instagram. So we reached it, relaunched it into ASBA. Um, and we can get a little bit more into that too and changed our strategies for Instagram as well. And then we also added um, uh, TikTok and um, just you know doing a variety of different um, new endeavors with TikTok only because um, you know our board members, the board members that are coming in um, are getting younger and younger. And so we have to prepare ourselves for that generation of new elected leaders and they're on these platforms. So that's what we did this last year. Okay. Awesome. Um, And that is very true. The the board members are getting younger. Um, So you, you talked a little bit about your Instagram, just 
before being kind of focused on the equity work. And that's what I really wanted to dive into today, um, because I know you've done a lot of present presentations and, and even inside my membership group. Um, so you have some extensive experience serving directly for schools and, and do have that passion for equity. So where, where does that passion, you know, kind of come from, Heidi? You know, it, I think everyone has their own journey. And for me, journey was, you know, if you've ever heard me present while I was on the national, um, on the ENSPR board, you know, um, I got invited to a lot of different chapters around the state, uh, different states across the country. And um, my journey was just from, you know, growing up, you know, I was a product of, you know, public education and, um, you know, just going through, you know, I was one of those kids that um, you know, like high poverty, you know, gangs and, you know, had a father incarcerated for 15 years and so on. And, you know, the Air Force just, you know, obviously was probably the best path for me. Um, and then coming out of that, um, I just learned that there was just so many different mentors and so many different people, you know, that helped, you know, shaped who I was because of public education. Um, and so I think just, you know, from, you know, for my own adversity and my own experiences, I wanted to give back. And so, you know, once I realized that uh, communications and PR, you know, in school PR is is an actual job, um, you know, it doesn't feel like work. And that's what I tell people. It's like once you find something that you absolutely love to do, it's a calling. It's, you know, you're blessed enough to not call it work. It's just it's purpose that you do every day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're so lucky to be, be in this. And, and we all are. Um, we've, we get to speak for all of the, all of the students and all of the stories in our school district. So you specifically had a campaign around equity 360. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Yeah. So we, it's actually equity 365 and we called okay. it that and we, yep, yeah, 365, 365 days. And we called it that because, you know, you know, we, I think, you know, school PR or public professionals, you know, we're always, we, we do so much right day to day. And we really, I think, find ourselves doing a lot of the tactical work, right? It's the day to day things, you know, how are we going to do this? What are we going to push out? You know, how are we going to celebrate this specific month or recognize these specific, you know, audiences or publics or different type of people um, or that culture, or this and that. And so um, we decided, like, how are we going to like, and bet at the work that we do every day in our day, you know, in our daily work, you know, at, you know, at ASBA. And so we called it, we're like, let's just call it equity 365 at every year. You know, that's something that we're just going to embed and we're going to work around that. We're going to plan that every year and it's going to look a little bit different. So what we do is um, every month um, we get together, my gets together um, as well as leadership and we identify what are the, you know, specific topics or areas or, you know, specific day or event we're going to cover, you know, for, for the year um, and then identify the different, you know, what's going to be the strategy and then identify those tactics that are going to be under those strategies for, you know, for every specific topical thing every month, um, you know, and just kind of, it's more of the str strategic planning, right. Around what we do um, and try to get ahead of it. And so, um, you know, I learned that, you know, that's st the strategic planning type of thinking, you know, at a school district, because really that's what you do, right? When you're trying to create a new strategic plan and you're trying to keep it alive, you know, how do you be, how do you keep it alive and how are you intentional? And so I use that same strategy for our equity work and wanting to be intentional every day, you know, that we do the work for equity. So you, I mean, it's kind of a mindset then of like, this is definitely just something we focus on once a month, uh, you know, throughout the year, um, this is, this is something that encompasses us 365 days a year. So you kind of talked about, you have your, those planning methods, those planning meetings are kind of each month. And then I'm sure that you're looking at, okay, how does equity fit into the stories we're telling and, you know, how we're approaching our work and all of that. Is that right? Yeah. You know, and, and it really just depends and it can look a little bit different and sometimes it's just changed. So for example, um, last year we, um, we did a lot of, um, you know, tactical work, like, you know, for example, let's just pick Hispanic heritage month, you know, cause that's something that's big, obviously in the Southwest and Arizona. 
Um, and we said, okay, let's pick five, you know, five different board members that represent that, you know, that culture, that ethnicity, um, and have them talk about, you know, them, you know, growing up and, or why they serve as elected leaders and why Hispanic Heritage Month, you know, is important. But let's just say maybe, you know, the next year we might change up, right, and not do that exact same thing. But maybe we ask now our board of directors, um, you know, uh, for a testimonial on why, you know, you know, what does, you know, what does their school district do specifically to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month? You know, so it just, it may change every year. Um, this year, what we started to do is we asked our members, you know, um, you know, how our board of directors, like, how effective is this equity work? And what can we do to provide, um, you know, provide value? And what we heard back is, you know, members want a toolkit, they want things that they can use. So we decided for specific areas like Hispanic Heritage Month or um, Native American Month, um, Heritage Month, we're going to provide resource web pages with a variety of different resources, like a resolution that uh, a template that a board could um, make, you know, make their own and then adopt it during a school board meeting. Or maybe it's, um, you know, a variety of different, you know, graphics that board members can take and they can post, repost on their social media sites with, you know, different messaging, um, you know, uh, on it, or, um, you know, just a variety of different things, resources that like a toolkit that board members or superintendent could take and apply to their own school district work. So, you know, that's a new, a new concept that we identified, you know, we stepped back and asked our members, you know, what, what could we do? How can we, you know, improve on this? And, you know, they spoke and we, you know, we put work into it. Yeah, that's awesome. People love toolkits. And I would just urge you, I mean, whatever state you're in, obviously Heidi's in Arizona and has that, uh, but a lot of states do offer things like that. And so when you're thinking about, um, you know, whether it be equity work or, you know, any of the stories that you're telling, any of these many months that get recognized right throughout the school year, um, there are some toolkits out there. So that is, that's really good. Um, now, a few years ago, um, you had shared a whole webinar with my membership group, which still is available. I'd really encourage anybody who's in that right now to, to take another listen to that because uh, it's got a lot of great things in it. But we really looked at social media through the lens of equity, right? And so, um, you know, being intentional and how do we do that? And so what what are some things that schools need to keep in mind um, when sharing things out on social media with equity in mind? You know, I think it really just de depends on, you know, what, how, how are you defining educational equity within your own district, your own community, you know, and that might, and that may look different. Um, you know, I think I, I, I urge you to get past the, the race, the ethnicity, um, the language and go beyond that. You know, for, for some, you know, communities, equity might be, you know, rural and small districts, right? And, and you know, and what could do, you know, there. So don't get, I think first, don't get trapped into the definition of what, what educational equity is. You know, you got to go beyond that. Um, and then, you know, identify what that's going to look like, you know, within your own community. So for us, I think, you know, with our social media, um, we focus on a variety of different things. But I one of them that for was one of the first ones. Um, was who are we, you know, showing on 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 our social media, you know, and what we what we saw is that, um, you know, our board members needed to the, the photos and images that we were showing need to be reflective of who our board members are, and we, we have, you know, we have hundreds of school districts, we have two hundred and twenty five school districts, you know, we have small, rural, we have large, but we also have, you know, indigenous, you know, communities, we have, um you know, a variety of different, you know, high, you know, Latino communities. So we do have a diverse set of, you know, board members. So we really were intentional of, you know, taking images and taking photos, showcase members, right, that are reflective of their communities on our social media. That was one of them. Another one for us is um, we do a lot of marketing, advertising, promoting, like, you know, of you do, and we wanted to show real children, and so we made a promise that we were going to stop using like stock images, even though the imagery has gotten better. Um, and we were just going to go out and visit schools. And it doesn't have to be a school, you know, within our own specific county. We're going to be intentional and, you know, five to 10 schools all across the, uh, across the state every year. 
and take pictures of those educators, the teachers are in the classrooms, those students, and really show those students in our marketing and promotions. So that way, when we are, you know, um, you know, doing a variety of different, you know, marketing, um, you know, canes and stuff, we're really reflective of real students in real schools in Arizona. Right. Yeah, that's really key. Um, and when you think back to your, you know, when you were in a in a big school district, how how many students were in your school district? There was thirty seven thousand. Okay, so that's a pretty big district, especially when you're talking to me and I'm used to three hundred students in a in a K through twelve district. Um, but I, you know, for those listening, it's getting out into those schools, right, and taking real pictures. Um, you're going to pick up on all of the different uh, things that might, you know, be talking about equity or inclusion or all of that. Um, but I know, you know, there's some people that are like, well, taking pictures of some kids might mean that, hey, there's a child, let's just say there's a there's a younger child that kind of has their hair messed up, or maybe not a real clean shirt, or, you know, some of those things that what what would you say to somebody who's listening right now or to me um about sharing those kinds of images as well um you know is that something that we should be thinking about or trying not to look at or um i'm just kind of showcasing some of my vulnerability heidi with that question yeah i really again i think it's you know always first of all asking questions is one of the best things you can do like i still even ask questions um if you're you know like when i was in Dorelli, um i would work with um you know the principals and say hey we want to go and take you know photos we want to you know represent one of the most things having you know at the time it was 37 schools i think it's it's i think it's like 42 schools now but you know um ensuring that we were being intentional and going and taking photos um of different schools of you know different populations of different you know um, you know, that were reflective of that community and working with the principal on like a variety of different, you know, diverse looking students, um, as well as like teachers and educators, right? And, you know, retention and recruitment, you know, people, you know, want to come to work, but they want to be, you know, they want to come to a workplace that are reflective of what they look like as well. People want to connect, you know, and I want to relate to other people. So, you know, with that in mind, I think when you take pictures of real kids doing real things. Um, the authenticity comes out. And I think that's really what's important is, you know, taking authentic photos. Like, I definitely don't want, you know, someone post a photo of me picking my nose or, you know, eating a sandwich, you know, and, and then posting it on Facebook. So it's the exact same, I think, strategy, right? I mean, ensuring that, you know, um, you know, those photos are, you know, appropriate, you know, uh, uh, you know, and of course you have to do all of that, you know, the parental consent and all of that and all those types of things as well. But then just working with your administrators and, you know, making sure that they're, they're okay with the images that you want to use. Cause in reality, it's reflective of their school as well. So, yeah. Now, is there any work? Um, I didn't put this in your cheat sheet. So all this is hitting you off the mark, but, uh, or just, you know, by surprise. Um, but is there anything that you're doing with your school boards, you know, to, of uh, helping them deal with, you know, some of maybe some of the divisiveness that might be going on uh, in regards to, you know, equity work or inclusion work that are happening there in Arizona? Um, you know, is there anything that you have found that has been helpful to your districts uh, for dealing with what might be happening and you know social media it's just very like easy to complain or easy to you know uh, voice any grievances or things like that so have you guys um, done some work in that aspect oh heck yeah that's what we've been doing probably for the last two years you know especially right after the pandemic um you know especially here in Arizona we dealt with a lot of anti-equity, um, you know, initiative work from, you know, the opposition and, you know, and many of our school districts, you know, were afraid or wanted to shut down on, you know, the equity work. And, and I think really what we have done that has really um, successful and effective is um, it's all about the delivery as PR professionals. It's all about the approach. Um, and so um, redefining equity as, you know, educational equity, because we all want students to succeed. Um, and then, you know, taking taking that language or taking that, I would say, um, you know, that that definition and then being able to use it when it comes to the, you know, the different initiatives that you want to do, you know, when it comes to equity. But, you know, 
how do we ensure that you know children are going to succeed? What are those challenges? What are those obstacles? And taking that route, I think, has been more effective. So calling it educational equity, when in reality, that's really what it is. So anything that we're doing to ensure that we are being equitable um, is to ensure that our children are going to succeed, every child. So I think that has really helped, um, as well as um, really working with data. And, you know, in school PR, um, you know, especially for people that, you know, have their APR um, you're, you know, you're no stranger to when it comes to, you know, to research data collection um, and, and identifying, you know, you know, what that data tells you. Um, I think for us, um, our last survey that we did with members, our, our members um, and superintendents, we asked them about our, our equity initiatives and how we can help them further um, that work in school districts. And um, we still had a very high number of uh, percentage of members that said, yes, we you know, we feel this is important. Yes, we want ASB to continue this work and, and these initiatives. So that's a really great indication, you know, for us as well to know that we, you know, to continue to move forward in this work. Um, we have an educational equity curriculum that we created, uh, trainings and professional development. We actually, um, partnered with ENSPR and provided that. Uh, I think it was about a year and a half to two years ago. Um, and we had a really good um, you know, number of people that were part of that. But it's curriculum, there's workbooks, workbooks and so on um, that really help you, you know, identify and break that down, you know, what, you know, what equity looks like and what's the work that's going to be, you know, vital in your own community, whether that's, you know, identifying, you know, the challenges and obstacles, that's just understanding the definitions, um, you know, what, what equity, you know, what that means, what that looks like. Um, and, you know, and going, you know, digging deeper into, you know, um, you know, practices and strategies, um, and, you know, and, and how do you embed that into your strategic plan? So there's so many different, you know, components to equity. Um, I just tell people, you know, obviously we're all going to be, you know, you know, we're not going to know everything about it. I said, we well, you know, I'm not a guru in equity, you know, of course, you know, um, I, I continue to learn, but it's, it's taking that first step forward in the journey and then just continue to move forward in that journey. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about wanting kids to succeed and then, you know, really kind of defining it as educational equity. And that's, that's uh, powerful. So awesome advice. Um, what's your biggest struggle when you, when it comes to social media, would you say? You know, I, for us, yeah, I think for me personally, that one of my biggest struggles that I kept, that I kept seeing on, on our platforms, well, first of all, we have various platforms and sometimes it just feels like you're, pushing out information or posting out information just to do it. That's one of my pet peeves. And I just felt like maybe it was probably like a year and a half ago. I felt like our social media was like spaghetti on the wall. It was just thrown there and it was just all over the place. And so I actually um, reached out to a consultant um, and I asked her to, if she could do a social media audit. Um, I, I needed an audit to identify like what we were doing, you know, what we were doing that was good, what we we're doing that wasn't as effective and what could we be doing? Um, and so uh, some key takeaways um, that, you know, that we learned was, you know, we were just putting out information on all platforms just to push it out. And, you know, I know that we hear this all the time, but, you know, every platform does have its own purpose. And so you have to really, you know, strategize and use that platform for that specific purpose. Um, and that does take time. So that, so, you know, I think one of the key takeaways is if you are going to do that, you know, focus on one platform and do it well, and then, you know, move on to the next for us, you know, and that's what we did. So for example, we were pushing out, um, we, you know, we have a lot of professional development opportunities, conferences and events at ASBA, and we would push those out, you know, everywhere, all over social media, as well as our internal platforms like, you know, email um, um, and our, our e-newsletter and so on. And we realized like we continue to hit big or push big on the events on our social media platforms when in reality, these people don't even register, you know, the first those links and they're not even the ones that are registering it's, you, it's usually the the school district secretary that registers all the board members for these events anyways so that's like one uh, you know for example that we identified we needed to like you know step back and not push as hard on our events maybe like our keynote speakers because that was about promoting an event but not like the registration of the event so if that makes sense so yeah that was i think one of the big ones for us 
Okay, that's good. But it's it is just good to step back and and look at what you're doing and seeing what makes sense. And it's kind of relates to me like, you know, using social media as a bulletin board. And it's just like it doesn't drive engagement. So not many people are going to see it. Um, so um, great advice. Um, as far as um, and, and I guess you kind of answered this of uh, what your best social media tip is. But I, what I picked up on is, you know, if you've got one platform do that really well before you jump onto some others is that kind of your best tip there you know that's one of my tips I think another tip that you know we did learn too is people just love seeing other people and they love seeing themselves on social media like I mean we just have, we're you know we we're it's we're I don't want to say that people are self-serving, right? But people just, you know, they love to be recognized. It, it's a feel-good. It's a feel-good initiative. And so um, we've really tried to focus on that, you know, on all of our platforms, um, especially, um, you know, like if we're asking somebody to share a personal, like, you know, challenge or a story on why they, you know, why they wanted to serve, you know, and become an elected school board member um, and, and really getting down to like, what's the story behind that, right? And we're telling stories like, you know, we go beyond stories, you know, we don't want stories like, oh, I decided to serve because product public education. No, there's got to be something there. And when we dig deep, we find out these stories from people all over the, the state, like, one person became a board member because he had ADHD in school and he was never diagnosed, right? And so um, it wasn't until one teacher really had to understand how to work with that, that he became, you know, he got involved and wanted to give back. We, you know, another one, you know, she, she was a, a board member and she was, you know, you know, native or in this, and she was put in one of those, um, uh, you know, schools uh, where, you know, she got taken away from her family and was put in one of those um, schools where um, they, um, boarding schools where they couldn't speak Navajo, they couldn't see their families, you know, and this was, you know, years and years ago, but, um, you know, she, she felt comfortable to tell that story in front of the camera. And so, you know, when we are showing those stories, you know, on all our different platforms, um, we got over 100,000 views just with that one story with our, the Native American board member because people want to hear about other people. They want to hear stories. It's heartfelt, you know, and it connects and it's emotional. And so for us, that's been, I think, a very big, uh, you know, huge achievement is telling those stories on our different platforms in different ways. And you really got me wondering how you're using TikTok because I haven't heard many associations say, oh, we want to jump into TikTok. Um, so can you just describe a little bit of what you've been trying to do on that platform? So we don't just get, we, so for example, I never got on TikTok, 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 TikTok um, until last year because it was just a lot of work. And then, um, you know, you, I think as, first of all, as a leader, you have to be open to um, different ideas, right? With and 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 hear, um, listen, hear from your own people, from your own staff. And so when my manager came on board, you know, she's younger, obviously, and um, you know, and she, you know, she she was really successful in TikTok in her other different positions. And I said, okay, if you want us to use TikTok, give me some examples of strategies on why you think. But go back and research our audience to make sure we're not doing it just to do it. We, and we also asked our other uh, school board associations, we're part of COSBAC as well. And it's um, it's basically like NSPRA, right? It's all the school board associations across the state and we're all, you know, all the communication professionals, we're all part of a group as well. And yeah, you're right, nobody else, I think one other state was using it. And so we decided, okay, well, we're gonna obviously be the trailblazers and we're gonna use it. And we started studying the trends of our, our our uh, board member demographic and the ages you know the the board members are are getting younger i mean we have board members right now that are um 20 and 18 years old one that just graduated high school and he decided he was going to run for his board and he's the youngest board member now in the state um and so you know just seeing that trend we thought okay it's probably going to take maybe one to three years to really get our followers on there but by the time we get it you know going our board members are going to already be using that specific um, you know, uh, social media, you know, platform because that's what they use. You know, that's that's you know that's their that's that's their you know, you know uh, what what should I say? That's their platform. That's you know right. that's what they love to do. So that's what we were trying to do and prepare. So um, you know, things that are successful on TikTok are not going to be successful on Facebook, right? So um, for TikTok. 
it's more of like, you know, the different like videos and the reels and, you know, our equity work is really, is, is really effect there um, because we can tell stories um, and, you know, use different hashtags and use different wor words that people will see on there and then go and continue to see on something else. Um, so it's more of stories and it's more of um, our actual events when we're at the events you know, showing different things that are happening at the event. So people can see that on TikTok. That's all effective as well. So you're not doing dance trends? Not yet. <laughs> but you know, some people, but that, that's all they that think of. Goal. Yeah. No, awesome. and it is, and that's a goal. But what we did do um, last year, we decided to do a video um, and ask board members who are like 40, 50, 60 years old um, and superintendents who are at that, that, they're that age group as well. And we said, look, you're representing students that are on these platforms and they're doing all these different, you know, trend dances. And we tested them on it. We're like, show us the mop or show us this or show us that. And honestly, the majority didn't know what these trends were on TikTok, but it was really a good, I think, um, you know, a, a good lesson for our board members that, hey, it's important to understand the trends, you know, and the and all these things and habits, right? That your students are, you know, are modeling or doing on social media, especially on TikTok, because you represent this group, right? So it's important that you understand, you know, what this group is thinking and what they're doing and what they're posting and so on. So we've done a really good job in trying to make that connection with them. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. This is good. And you're a trailblazer. And uh, like you said, it might not take off right away, but over time. Um, and of course, I've done a lot of teaching on Instagram reels and now Facebook has reels, which is basically like TikTok, but on those channels. So um, it's a unique way of storytelling and uh, you can do those videos and things. Um, so Heidi, what is the best way for our listeners to stay connected to you? I'm all over the place, right? And I know, and I do, you asked me this earlier and I'll say it out, you know, out loud in a while is... You know, my last name is Vega and I get that asked a lot. So it is Vega. So um, all my platforms, you know, it's, if you just Google Heidi Vega, you'll see all the different platforms on there, but um, anything, anyway, um, if you want to email, if you, my cell phone is, you know, obviously, you know, published on our website, you can text me, um, you can message me. I'm on, I'm on Facebook. You can DM me on Instagram as well. Um, and if you want to, you know, direct message me on, on Twitter as well. I mean, there's so many different people. I have so many different colleagues and friends all over the state because of Enspra and Cosback. You know, it's just whatever you like, whatever platform, you know, you're most comfortable, you know, feel free to contact me there. We all have a variety of different examples with our Equity 365 plan. Um, it's not a toolkit, but I've heard people say it. they feel like it. it is a toolkit. More than happy to share that with you to kind of get you started. I also do want to say um, your your bootcamp, your social media bootcamp, I did have my team um, do that um, last year. And um, it was, for them, I think it was, they loved it. You know, it was a good amount of work for them to, you know, stay intentional about you know, using uh, those practices and applying that work in real, you know, real work and real day work. But um, I loved it. It was effective. I had them, you know, report back and then apply that to their goals. Uh, and that just really helped us. So, you know, kudos to that. And if, you know, for the listeners out there, if they've never done it, it's an amazing um, boot camp. And if you can do it during the summertime, um, it, I think that really helped my team. I think it was broken down, I think two or three times through the year, but the summertime is where they really have got it when they loved it. So, yeah, well, thank you. Well, I just recently changed up my boot camp a little bit. My boot okay. Camp, my boot camp training is still being done, but it's inside my membership group. So, um, that's oh, uh, I love that. one little change, but we're, we're actually going through it right now. Uh, in, in the months of December and January in the group. And then we record it all as well. Um, but it just got a little bit too much for me to manage with separate programs. And so now it's guys, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, guys with, with the membership group, you get ongoing training, but these specific boot camps that really give you the foundational basics to be successful with social media with, like you said, even an association or we have a lot of ESCs or cooperatives that are a part of um, the membership group as well. Um, we're here to help you. So thanks for that little plug, Heidi. But um, we'll get your email address for sure linked um, along with a couple of your social platforms. Uh, so you guys, Heidi's so giving. Um, definitely check out what she's doing there with the Arizona School Boards Association pages. You can kind of check out some of the social media there as well. Um, thanks for hanging out with us today. 
Yeah, definitely. I put my eyelashes on and makeup for you. So yes. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. And now we're going to be kicking things over to 2023. I cannot believe it. So this is the last interview of 2022, Heidi. So thank you for uh, being with us today. Thank you for having me. You bet. Everybody, happy new year. We're going to make 2023 the absolute best year yet. Um, and that's by helping kids succeed, right? Um, and that's what we're all about. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.